Okay, I'm going to be demonstrating the basic use of the Voyance software. Voyance has two icons that you'll notice on the desktop. The blue colored icon is for the acquisition software. The yellow or orange colored icon is where the images are stored uh, for the mini packs environment and also if we load viewers on providers computers where they'll pull the images up to look at them so what we do is in our systems we will partition the hard drives so that part of it is used for the acquisition the operating system and such the other portion is used for the long-term storage or for the viewer capabilities this is all managed through what they call their vpacks so today we're going to launch the acquisition software to begin with. It launches very quickly. At this screen, the login screen, you can configure from the engineering login different users. In this case, we've added an admin, a technologist, and then just a generic user. We're going to log in as an engineer and you can set any of the users up with a password or you do not even have to have a password. You can have just the, the, the user's name. When you log in, you log in to the four basic screens that you'll see at the top. One is the work list. This is where studies will be located if you're utilizing DICOM modality work list or if you have added a study that's going to be done maybe later in the day or the next day and you want to just save it until the patient comes in they will sit on the work list the ad is where we'd go when we're going to schedule a new patient to x-ray the completed is where the images will go once they've been completed they've been acquired and we hit the complete and it sends them to our mini packs then this is where they'll reside query is where we can monitor when the images are being transferred to a packs either a third party packs or the local packs it'll give you the status of the sending of those so we go back to the ad when we add a patient, we want to start with their ID number, which is typically the medical record number that is given to the practice through their electronic medical record. This time we're going to make up one that's just called test 35. We're going to put in, or test 34, we're going to put in the first name test and the last name trip, T-R-I. And I'm going to purposely misspell it, T-R-I-L. Uh, the birth date, you can choose from the year, month, and day here, or you can simply type it in, and you do need to add the slashes, but you do not have to put the leading zeros. So say the birth date is 9-3-88. It gives the age, and it gives the birth date here. You can just click on any other field to move on to the next entry. Here you do want to put in a sex, male, female, or unspecified. And then the accession number, it will fill that in if you're using modality work list, or if you are not, it will automatically assign an accession number. The performing physician, you can build this each time you enter this a study for the very first time you would put in the performing physician first name last name credentials and then after that they will be permanently in there and they will be part of the drop down list in this case we've configured dr jerry and dr smith or two of them will select dr jerry had ordered these x-rays the scheduled date you do not need to complete this uh, it'll assume that it's today unless you're scheduling something that you want to do tomorrow then you could schedule the date for tomorrow study notes are typically only configured on this system so there's no guarantee that they would be transferred to a third party packs depending on the DICOM header uh, information but you can type in any kind of notes here that will stay with this study with this patient Positions are the views that you're going to select, and you select those from the avatar over here. We have configured the basic studies for most practices. You select the body region, and then we have configured already the different views that you would do, and even at the bottom, multiple views 
in configured studies. In this case, we have a C-spine 2 view. If you click that, then it's automatically going to select an AP and a lateral C-spine for you, and we configure these in the order you do them in. Each one of the body regions has all the different views available here that, again, you can select the individual view or you can select the configured studies. These are all individual body regions. If you're selecting a, view, a procedure that has multiple body regions, for instance, the acute abdomen, it would have a PA chest, the flat and upright abdomen, since it's multiple body regions, then when we configure these uh, in, their, in our configuration screen, they will be put on the left-hand side of the screen here, and you can configure up to five individual multiple body part studies. Once you've entered this information, you can either save it and the information will go to the work list if you're going to x-ray them later, or if you're going to x-ray them right now, then you would simply hit start. When you hit start, it takes you into the acquisition screen. It selects a detector, tells the detector to get ready, and you can start acquiring images. In this case, we're going to pick of this an image and replicate an exposure. Um, here it's telling us that the exposure is ready. Any of the information scrolls across the bottom here and you see the activity bar saying that it's ready to take an image. As we look at this, I notice that the name is spelled incorrectly. So if we want to edit that at this juncture, we can come into this edit button and if you fly over these tools, it'll tell you what they do. You can click the edit, come in, correct the spelling, just hit OK. It takes you right back, it corrected the spelling, took you back to that first image that you're ready to acquire. We're going to replicate taking an exposure. The image will pop up. We can configure in our other screen um, when we're setting this up initially for it to automatically flip the image horizontally. You can flip it vertically, horizontally, any of those that you want. In this case, we do typically flip all the PA chest horizontally so that they present the way that we're used to seeing them. And of course, you'd want to add your lead markers and use appropriate shielding. This first image gives us the basic tools that you'll use most of the time along this aisle here. It's got the rotation if you need to rotate the image clockwise or counterclockwise 90 degrees at a time, if you needed to flip it, uh, if you wanted to crop it, and this crop button, it'll open up a crop box and you can set it to automatically crop or you can set it to manually crop each image. We generally will start out with it on not on automatic crop till the customer gets used to um, seeing how the cropping works and then we can turn the auto crop on. The problem is if you turn the auto crop on and it does, it is a computer, it does recognize something that she needed to be cropped off that is important information that you want to have on there, then, then you may not know what you're not seeing. The automatic cropping image will appear like this. There could be something cut off that you wanted to see and the only way you would see it is to hit the crop and then you could see any data there that you may think is important to show. And so you can anytime manually crop it even when it's on auto crop. The other thing we have in the crop tool is this is an image rotate button. If you left click on the center of this and move it up or down, then you can rotate the image so that it's straight up and down and then you can use your crop box to crop it in. That comes in handy when you're doing like a lower leg, uh, sometimes with a, um, a forearm. You may have to position the patient on the cassette or the DR panel going from corner to corner. That way you can straighten the image up and then do the cropping so that they can look at it straight up and down. There's measurement tools, right label, left label, uh, all those are on here as well. If we want to add a left marker, we click on it. It has the two different icons beside the marker. You hold the left mouse click down and you can change the size of the marker and you can change the rotation of it if you've rotated the image and you want it straight up and down as well. To get rid of any of the 
annotations one at a time. You can fly over it, activate it, and then just hit the delete button on the keyboard to delete the annotation. This particular button will hide any of the annotations. If there's some reason you don't want the annotations to, to show up on some images that you're transferring or such. And then this is the reprocess the image. If you reset this, it will reset it back to the way that the image was originally acquired. Sometimes we get enthusiastic about changing some of the parameters or the look of it and just want to start over again. This is how you reset it. The bottom thing is the delete or the reject button. If you did this image, you cut off part of the anatomy, you want it to reject the image, you can select this. You can either select reject or delete. If you reject the image, it's going to reject it, but it'll leave the view here and you can immediately re-image that particular view. If you hit delete, it's going to delete the image as well as the actual view. The whole box will go away. So generally speaking, we use the reject. When you hit the reject, it will automatically ask you why the image is being rejected. And then you have to indicate why it was rejected. And a reject analysis is kept and will show you shortly where you go to retrieve that reject analysis. If we open one of these windows up, these fold and unfold to reveal some additional tools and image icons in here that you can use if you need to make any kind of adjustments. On this particular one, we can select hard processing. It'll give it a more black and white look. We can hit soft. It'll soften the image up, typically the way that we do for chest x-rays to see behind the heart and through the mediastinum and still see lung detail. We generally can adjust the sliders here if need be to reduce the sharpness contrast or increase the brightness. And then the other way to adjust the image is you can adjust the curve within the histogram by moving the sliders left or right within the histogram to change the look of the image. Generally speaking, the Algorithms do a very good job of producing a good quality image as long as you have the right exposure factors, you're within plus or minus about 30%. Here's where we have it selected to auto process versus where we'd select our own processing. Uh, we always leave that on auto process. And then this is where grid suppression can be applied. In this case, we've applied the vertical grid suppression for a 10 to 1, 103 line grid. You can select the different grid ratios and you can select automatic um, or typically vertical. If you have a reciprocating Bucky, we can configure this to none and this can be set to be applied globally in one of the configuration screens we'll show you shortly. If you did the PHS on here and it was indicated that this was a C-spine um, then you can change the name of the procedure here with this edit button. You would click on this, you would come select the correct body part, the correct view, hit save. It'll automatically apply the correct algorithm. We have asked it to automatically flip the image horizontally. So it reprocessed it, flipped the image horizontally, and gave us the correct algorithm for this particular image. Again, this is the edit button. If you select it the wrong view when you do it, it's not uncommon for someone to get out of sequence and then just go ahead and expose all their images using the correct exposure factors, come back and rename them, and then make them in the correct algorithm and the correct look. We talked about the different edit button here. Another edit button that we have on the system is if we need to move images from this study to another study. We can select this edit button. We can come in and cut or copy this or all of the images. We can select all the images. If they were done on a wrong patient, you need to move it to a different patient. 
I typically will copy them and then come back and cut them later once everything's done. But you would copy them or cut them, come out of this study, go into the open the study up that they need to be put in with, hit the edit button on there, and then you can import them or paste them right in to that particular study and they'll take the images and take them out of the study and move them to the, to the correct study. So there's basically four editing type buttons that we have on here. This edit button to move images or to, to take images from one patient to another or to copy and paste, if you will. This edit button edits the patient's demographic information and the type of studies that you're doing. This edit button edits the actual procedure so that you can select the correct view and the correct body part for the correct algorithm. And this edit button, if you will, to delete or reject an image. The other buttons along the side here, we typically don't have network printers connected to these, but and we do have uh, the capability of putting a report into the patient's information here. It's not typically done through this. It's usually done through the EMR. We have the capability of burning a CD. When we burn a CD, we put a blank CD in. It'll automatically recognize that drive. We can choose to include image overlays, which are electronic markers or any measurement tools and such. We want to leave it on force format. We can select DICOM and JPEG or whatever type of file structure we want. And then you just hit OK and it'll burn it right onto the CD. If we want to export these images to an external drive, that seems to be more common these days because Mac computers and many of the newer laptop computers don't even have CD burners in them. So you can export the image and again, you can choose the file format. You can choose where you want to export the folder to go to, and then you can back it up right onto an external drive. The panel will automatically go to sleep after about, we can configure that five to 10 minutes, depending on how we configure it. And then when it's sleeping, it reserves the battery power. So it'll make the battery last longer and, and it won't have the electronics being activated. To wake it up, you simply hit wake up or you can hit keep sleeping if you want to move that screen out of the way. We'll cancel this. And then if you needed to wake it up to do another image, you would simply click wake up. Whenever you go into the system and you put in the add information and prepare the thing to, to do an image, it'll automatically wake the panel up and tell it to get ready. Some other common tools that come with the system routinely are all the angle, uh, spine angle, the spine markings, uh, a host of tools that are in this category here. This is some of the image parameters, such as invert. Often providers will look at inverted image, especially when they're looking for a pneumothorax or certain fractures and that kind of thing. So that's how you can invert the image on the fly. The server, the, I'm sorry, the viewer uh, tools look exactly like these tools. The very same tools exist in the viewer that exist in the acquisition software. Again, we can fold or unfold these hidden tools and also if we unfold this we can add images on the fly on that particular study so this opens up our avatar to add any other images it has the extra small small medium and large this is not configured in most of our applications this would apply when you were uh, having an integrated generator and it would select the patient size for that body view and then it would apply the proper exposure factors. So again, if you fold these up, you've got a bigger view of the image. We will say that we are not going to do this image. We can just go ahead and delete this one. It deletes it off the screen. We have one completed image. If we want to pause this study, because we wanted the provider to look at it, make sure there was nothing else that we needed. We can hit pause. It'll put it on the work list for us. And then we can go ahead and go to a next patient, add the information in and, and x-ray the next patient while we're waiting for that one to be, uh, the, to be approved. We come back to the work list. 
if we are finished now, the provider says, yes, that's all we're going to need. When you're through with that study, you want to mark the study as completed. When you select the complete it, we can configure the M system to automatically send the images to its internal packs, the Voyance V packs, into the, uh, the viewer that I had shown the icon for in the beginning where the long-term storage is, and we can automatically send to a third-party packs if we want to, we can choose that to send, or if we're only going to send internally and the provider will later determine if they want to send one to the um, like a, a radiologist or to a third-party pack system, then well, the way that we would do that is we can come into the complete it. We see here's the patient that we just did. If they say, I want to send this to a third-party packs to the radiologist, you could select to server. It, you can uncheck the voyance, select the pack system that you want to send it to, and it'll remember the last thing that you did. We can even tell it not to ask this in the future, just to automatically assume that they just need to go to the uh, third-party packs, and when you hit OK, it'll automatically send them to the third-party packs. When we're searching in the complete it or in the work list for studies that are to be done, then it automatically sets up or defaults to the last month as a search field. You can search by day. Notice that the date changed here. You can search by the month or you can search by the year. And when you do, you select any of these. You can hit search. It'll show you everything that was done in the last year. Or you can clear the fields so that there's no date search at all and you're going to do sort of a wild card search for a patient by the name of Smith, for instance. Clear the fields, hit search, and it'll show you anybody with that particular name. Obviously, I don't have a Smith in here. Um, we can do like we just did the test. Uh, you can search by name, the ID, um, either one, whatever information that you have. I think we had test 34 on that one we just did. So if you search by an ID number, then it'll give you the patients with that ID number. To clear that, you would exit out of this. Typically, we'll go back to the one month search. So that'll be kind of our default. One other thing that's a very nice tool for this is a comparison. You'll notice that comparison is on the side over here, but it is not activated right now. If we want to compare images, I think I have one in here. I go back to the last year, hit the search. We've got this patient, and let's just say that this other one, Donald Duck, was done the same. It's the same patient. Um, and we want to compare, you click the first one, hold the control down, click the second one, and then the compare button, when you've got two selected, will light up. When you click on the, this, then it'll automatically show one study on this side, one study on this side. You can scroll through the different images to compare side by side. When you're done, you simply click, click on the check mark and it'll take you back to the work list. To sign out, you would come into uh, the Voyance, click on that, hit exit, and you'll exit the software. Uh, again, we talked about the repeat reject analysis. That's under the statistics. This shows you all the images that were done on this software. This shows rejected images. You can set, again, a date range. It'll give you what images were rejected and the reason they were rejected. And you can actually export this in a PDF save it on the desktop, put it on a thumb drive, take it somewhere and print it out on like a, a spreadsheet that you can keep and, and document. In the settings part, this is where we can configure different things in here. Uh, this is the setup of the screen on the front. We typically leave that as it is. We do have the miscellaneous frame and under this the only thing you could do would you could select either if you want it metric indication on the marker sizes by centimeter or such or imperial and inches and then the other thing is that we would 
can select different colors of the icon of, of the uh, annotations. So if you put multiple annotations on, you can select different colors for the first annotation, the second annotation, the third and fourth annotations, and you can have them in different colors so that they show up on the image depending on if they're the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth annotation done. Under general, this is where typically you would use to set up any users. Uh, you would just hit new user, type in who it is, the username, and again, a password is not required, but this is where you can set up a password as well. If someone's no longer with you, you want to get rid of them, you come in to this screen under engineer and you can delete this patient or this user. The license is something that's internal. It shows the hardware code and the actual license code is within this. Here's where we can change the institution name and where our physicians go that we had ordered earlier. If some provider is no longer with us, we can get rid of them from the screen here. Under the patient, this is where we have the different body views. We've got the views, the human, and the main. These are all the different views. Um, the, the, the different body regions, and these are all the different views that we have configured. And then under the body part groups, this is where we can configure multiple views and, and studies. So you can create a new one. You would just hit add a group. You would type in the name of it. Uh, then you select from the avatar which views you want it, and it'll save them in a multiple group. Under the communications, this is where we would set up a third-party PACs or any additional PACs targets. Uh, you would just hit new remote node and then we can configure if the study uploading and study completing, we can tell it to automatically send to this or to make it ask. We can include the image overlays and we can even indicate that it does not need to check with us each time. So again, study uploading is from this icon where it says to server. Study completing is where when we had the done down here and we send it to the completed image. So this is what we do. This is where we would do that. Here is where we can select different image tags. If they're doing DR, CR, or DX, we can change the tag and indicate it here. So the hardware prefers to have certain tags as it's being transferred to them. Under hardware, this is where our uh, the DR detector resides. In this case, I have two detectors that I have simulated here. The detector will show up here. We configure this when we set the system up um, and we would have the uh, what type of detector it is. We would set up the resolution. We can set it to automatically rotate. We can set it to automatically apply grid suppression. And here's where we'd indicate how long for it to go to sleep. This is a simulated uh, sensor, but otherwise they would have the calibration files in, in this field, in this middle field, uh, in, in a normal uh, system. And again, that's all configured when we set it up. Any changes you make, you just hit OK. It automatically applies them. Certain ones, we do exit the software, and restart the software to apply certain changes. Um, and again, you would hit exit when you want to exit the software. One last thing that I wanted to show on the under the completed list is we have a search and then you we typically use this simple search. You can select the advanced search and search by modalities or AE titles and such as that. We usually leave it on that. And then if you need to delete an image or a study for any reason, you have to be signed in as an engineer to accomplish this. When you sign in, you would select the study, hit the delete button, and it goes away forever. Okay, that will conclude the basic operation of the Voyant software.